Local broadcast of this program is made possible by grants from Pensacola Junior College, the Florida Department of Education, and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Bonjour, mes amis, and welcome to Gourmet Cooking. We're going to do some interesting things tonight. I hope they'll meet with your approval. We're going to do a beautiful fish dish. In fact, it's one that I had the privilege of uh, learning in Angers, France, when I studied with a young chef by the name of Philippe Bazou. And there they used pike because that was a native fish. But we're adapting it to, uh, for what's available to us. And that is some nice red snapper in this case. It could be redfish, it could be any number of white fleshed firm fish. Now we're going to use red snapper that's going to be wrapped in lettuce leaves and poached in a beautiful sauce made with the poaching liquid and some other seasonings. And it's called Poisson Rouge Val de Loire. In other words, from the Valley of the Loire. And then also with that, to accompany it, we're going to have some nice tomatoes, which will be baked in the, in the oven, a very simple but a nice dish to accompany a good fish dish. And then some nice petit pois uh, au jambon, some green peas with ham and some other seasonings. Real good combination. I think you'll enjoy them tonight. So, a number of things to do, so let's move on. We're going to take some lettuce. Now, let's talk about that, though, first. I have a head of lettuce here, regular iceberg lettuce and I've cut the center out. Now I need to get those leaves off and if I pull those they're going to just break and crumble but if I put this under the sink and let the water run down in the center and all around the openings those leaves will come apart just by themselves. Now we're not going to show you but it works very well and I already have most of the leaves already in a bowl over here. A nice big pot of boiling water. We want to blanch our lettuce leaves that is, blanch them so that they will be soft and pliable. So we simply take the lettuce leaves and place that in some boiling water. Oh, I would say 30, 40 seconds. We're going to need, oh, six or seven of these nice big leaves. And you also like to do a few extra in case the uh, leaves tear on you. So we just simply put in the lettuce, making sure that the water gets inside, that hot water will blanch the lettuce and let it become very soft and pliable. It doesn't take long. So let's make sure we have enough by putting all these big leaves. And I have a couple of extras here. We'll just put them in in case we have to patch or to just Make sure we have enough that way. All right, now that's going to take just a few minutes, few seconds really, longer for that to uh, blanch and get very, very soft. So we're not going to start on anything else. We're going to get these blanching nicely. Let's see, I can pull one out. You can see it's nice and soft. Now to stop that cooking, we're going to put it back into the cold water that it was in before. Let's pull these leaves out. Stop the cooking. It sets that color. If we don't put, the coal, put them in cold water, they're going to turn gray and very unattractive. So let's get those leaves soaking in the cold water. As I said, that will stop the cooking and set the color. And that's what we want. All right couple more and we should have our lettuce leaves. Now we're going to let this pot do double duty tonight because we need to blanch some green peas. And since that water is almost to the boil, we'll let it come back to the boil and we'll blanch our green peas for about three to five minutes in that water. In the meantime, we have a tomato dish and I've already peeled these. And we have one left that we need to peel. We have another pot of boiling water here. We simply want to run this tomato in that boiling water. 
and about 30 seconds for that. So let's take our green peas now. These are frozen green peas, and we're going to have some nice ham to go with it, and I have that ham, so we'll set that aside. These are still frozen. They've only been sitting out a few minutes. So we're going to put those into the boiling water and let them blanch for about three minutes. Let's stir them around and we'll keep an eye on them. They're going to need a little salt. And the salt is at the other end and also we're going to need this little bowl uh, at the end so I wanted to rinse it and put it aside so it'll be ready for us. Now we have our salt. We can add a little bit of salt to that water. That's only about a half teaspoon. It's not that much salt. Just a little salt though to make the flavor come out real nice. We'll let that come back to the boil and we should have our peas blanched. In the meantime, our tomato has been in this boiling water. Let's take it off the fire. We no longer need it. And let's refresh this tomato in cold water to stop the cooking and to make the skinning of this tomato simple. All right, we have done that. Let's put that aside for a moment. And on that burner, we have a little bit of heat here. We have three tablespoons of butter. That's going to go with our tomatoes. We need to get that melting, so let's put that there. And let's first take the stem end out of our tomato. And we peel it. You see how nicely the skin comes off? Once it's in that water for 30 to 40 seconds, a lot depends on the tomato, how firm and uh, all it is, that it only took about 30 seconds there. Now, we have a little blossom end that's not very attractive, but we have our nice tomato, and we turn that upside down and place that on our tray with the others. Now, this is a baked dish, so I have a nice container, which is oven proof. We want to put the tomatoes that we have already. So we have our nice tomatoes, and our butter is melting, so we'll let that continue. In the meantime, we're going to have to get on with our fish, so we'll have some fish for supper. Let's turn the butter on in this skillet, and we'll melt that. At this time, though, we'll take about six or eight. Actually, we could use a couple more. We have them here. Onions, cutting them fairly roughly. That's these green onions. We want to cut those, the tops and all. All right, we don't need quite all of them, so we'll take those end pieces. And going to our butter here, that's going to melt here in a minute. Get the bottom a little bit coated. And let's put our green onions into the butter and let those form like a base, because we're going to poach our salmon, uh, excuse me, our snapper in this container. All right, our peas are doing nicely. They need a few minutes yet. yet. Our butter is melted uh, in this little skillet. We need now about a good teaspoon and a half of some dried basil. Let that cook in the butter just enough to moisten. Bringing that over here, we'll add a little bit of salt and pepper. And now we have a nice flavoring for our tomatoes, which are going to go into a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes, and they will be ready and very tasty and flavorful. It will accompany our fish.
All right. So basil, if you don't prefer, care for the basil, thyme is a nice substitute for this. Let's place that in our oven at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. Now, well, while we're waiting for this, although I need to get to the fish real quickly, let me just tell you about the, where these are. In volume one, the fish dish is on page 93. The tomatoes in the oven are on page 224. And the petit pois, the ham and the peas are on page 233. All right, let's take this nice fish I have here. We want to fillet it. I simply cut it right behind the gills and going down the backbone. Now this fish has not been scaled because we're gonna skin that. And by cutting along the backbone, turning the knife toward the bone, we can then fillet this fish. When I get over on the other side, as you can see here, we simply cut through and release that fillet off that side. Then scraping against the bone, we take the fillet off. We would do the same on the other side, but for the sake of time, we will stop right there. Now, turning our heat down there, let's skin this piece of fish, and we take our knife with our fingers holding a piece of the skin. We simply run it along the skin. This is a much easier task if the fish has not been scaled, although it's still very simple, even if it has. So we have a nice piece of fish filleted. Now, let's stop this a moment, bringing our lettuce over to the center here. Let's take these nice fish fillets, which I already have. Taking a nice leaf, we simply wrap it in the lettuce leaf, placing that on top of the onion. We wrap this, each piece of the fish, in one of our nice green lettuce leaves. It acts as a cover or a casing. It keeps the flavors in, it holds the fish together, and it gives it a very nice appearance as well. So wrapping our fish fillets, we're going to need to add to that a poaching liquid, a liquid in which this will cook. Now that could be fish stock, but then you would have to have parts of the fish to make the stock with, the backbone and all, and it's quite easy to do, but time doesn't permit on this show. And whenever I need fish stock and don't have the necessary makings all the time, I use a substitute, and that is clam juice. So we're gonna pour our clam juice, and we want that juice to come up just to about uh, almost to the top. If I'm a little short of clam juice, I simply add a little white wine, and that makes our poaching liquid. And to bring this back to the boil, we'll simply cover it lightly. In the meantime, our peas are ready. Let's take those and pour those into the colander and drain them. In the meantime, let's take this skillet and put a little butter in there. And we're going to put about a half a cup of onion and saute that. So as that butter melts, those onions will saute, and we will be able to do our dish of peas. Wiping up the board, picking up any little debris that we have from the onions particularly. We need to get this back to poaching. It takes a few minutes. Poach, fish poaches rather quickly. Now for our peas, we're also going to need some ham, and I have some nice little slices, but I want to take 
this outer rind off because it's not attractive and it's chewy and I don't believe it's very tasty. So we simply cut the rind off. And we want to julienne these. Julienne meaning into little strips. So we're going to julienne a ham. You can see it goes rather quickly. And that is going to be added to our, ha our onions as soon as we get those there we go, then now the butter is melted, they're sautéing. We can now place the ham on top and toss that in the onions and the butter and get that nice and cooked and hot and flavorful. So we have our onions and the ham and we're gonna add the peas and some seasoning. We have our fish, which is poaching nicely. Let's take this lid off and let that juice cook all the, the fish just nicely. Throwing away our debris. We have our onions, or rather our tomatoes in the oven. It might help to put our lid back so that that steam will come back on top and cook those. It will only take, go oh, five to 10 minutes or so to cook our fish. And after that, we're going to remove the fish. We need to take our nice poaching liquid and make a beautiful sauce out of it. So we're gonna do that in a moment. All right. Now that we have our ham and We want now to add just a touch of sugar, a teaspoon, along with some salt and pepper, and that happens to be on the other end of the counter as usual. A little salt and pepper according to your own taste. Mine likes pepper, so we put a fair amount of nice black pepper. And to that we want to add our nice blanched green peas, and we toss all that and let that cook together, and it will be ready for service very shortly. Beautiful combination, the ham, the onions, the green, green of the green peas, makes a lovely contrast. All right, now let's go to our fish and first want to remove, turning that fire down. Let's remove the fish and that should be cooked. We want to put those aside and keep them warm. This won't take long. We could put that into a very slow oven or just simply cover this with a little tin foil and we would have our fish being kept warm, but we'll just set them aside at the moment and taking a nice poaching liquid, we'll put that into another skillet and strain it because we want the liquid and we want that to boil rapidly and reduce. So we can put this aside, this burner is not occupied, put that over there making sure that the heat is off. Now, we can start serving a few of our items while we finish up our sauce. And that will be, first of all, our green peas, which is our onions, the ham, and the green peas. Flavorful, colorful, and just as fragrant as can be. So, we have that dish. Put this aside. And we want to put that into a little more attractive 
environment, so we put a nice plate underneath it. Putting that on our table, we want to now go to our oven and extract our nice tomatoes. As you can see, the tomatoes are nice and cooked. The butter is just sizzling. Those marvelous flavors have gone right through the tomato. Now that dish is hot, so we'll place it on the table and warn everyone that the dish is hot so that no one will burn themselves. Now coming back to our dish here, we've got to add several things. We're going to add a little bit of butter to enrich this and some heavy cream and some mustard. Now this should boil for quite a while and I'm afraid we're going to be a little short of time to do that. So I'm going to pour some off but ordinarily would let this boil until it reduces by at least two-thirds all the way down to about a third to concentrate the flavor. But so that we won't have too watery a sauce, I'm going to just take some of it out and proceed from that so that in the time allowed, we can have dinner. Well, we're going to add some butter to the liquid. Now, because there was wine in there, we have an acid. And the butter is going to blend with that. And if we do it right, it acts as a thickening agent and becomes almost like a beurre blanc sauce. But we need to add some flavoring, and that's going to be some nice brown mustard. It's Mo mustard from Mo France, that style. And it's grainy. It has the, the mustard seed in the, the grains of the mustard seed. It's very nice. A comparable mustard would be the Louisiana Creole mustard. We blend that and we add that to our, add our cream and we have a very rich and very flavorful sauce. We have one cup of cream. Now we'll bring that to a boil and let that cook a little bit if we have the time. It's going to be nice and thick. So let's take a nice platter, and instead of the usual technique of placing the sauce over the fish, we're simply going to put the sauce in the platter and reverse the procedure. Now, had we had a little more time, we would have cooked that a little longer, the sauce would be a little thicker, but I believe me, it is thick enough and it is just as flavorful as can be. All right, one more thing to get our fish back into the sauce now. now we have now our Poisson Rouge Val de Loire, our red snapper, our red fish, cooked in the style of the Valley of the Loire. A marvelous, flavorful combination. We'll garnish with just a little bit of lemon on each piece. And if the time will permit, we'll chop just a little parsley and add a little bit of green on green for a nice complimentary garnish. So sprinkling just a touch of parsley over the whole, we have this green against green in our nice cream sauce. A marvelous dish called Poisson Rouge Val de Loire. And we'll add that to the other ingredients that we've put on the table. I think I've made more mess than I've, than I've done good. So let's place this on our table. We have our Poisson Rouge Val de Loire, our Petit Pois au Jambon, or our petit peas with nice ham, and our baked tomatoes, our tomate au four. A very interesting combination, all great flavors. And, you know, with that marvelous sauce, 
It's an absolute must to have some beautiful, crusty French bread. You can hear it crack. It's a nice, crusty, honest French bread. Beautiful with that sauce. Also good with the peas and the tomatoes. Naturally, a little white wine always rounds out the flavors of a good meal. We are going to enjoy this one. I hope you will enjoy it too and try it. Join us, won't you? A bientôt. La douceur du temps nous fait des avances. Partez, mes enfants, vous avez 20 ans. Partez en vacances. Vous verrez agile sur l'onde tranquille. Les barques dociles au bras des amants.